Hi everyone, we're talking about the robotics industry as we head into 2020. I want to talk about the outlook here uh, for this technology. Greg, you cover robotics uh, so much for ZDNet. Um, what, you know, in terms of the outlook, how does the robotics sector look uh, next year and beyond? Yeah, thanks, Karen. Uh, it's a really exciting time to be in robotics, and it has been for a few years now. Um, this is a $100 billion global sector, and it's really been growing by leaps and bounds over the last several years. Um, it's driven by um, kind of very rapid diversification in the industry as a collection of different technologies kind of come online and um, enable the spread of automation uh, technologies. Uh, one big factor behind the growth uh, is that industrial robots are no longer the exclusive domain of heavy industry or huge factories, which is kind of traditionally what we think of when we think of uh, industrial robots, right? Like a car factory, for example. Collaborative robots in particular have helped expand the enterprise um, customer base to include mid-sized, even small businesses um, in, in areas like light manufacturing or uh, materials handling, fulfillment, uh, like logistics centers, for example, and beyond, lots and lots of different industries. But the good times may be coming to an end, uh, or at least if not an end, uh, a, a big slowdown. Uh, this week I spoke with uh, Chris Harlow, Director of Product Development at uh, Real-Time Robotics, which is a, a big robotics firm, about his predictions for 2020 and beyond, and he had some smart things to say. The takeaway is that the good times are still rolling in some corners of the sector, but they probably won't last much longer across the board. Well, and great, you know, in terms of the slowdown you mentioned there, you know, is there a specific area where we'll see more of a slowdown in, in terms of robotics as a whole? Yeah, yeah, um, you know, collaborative robots, which um, are so kind of emblematic of the, of the good times in the robotics industry for the past several years, that kind of is one, um, again, emblematic uh, uh, corner of the sector where, where Harlow thinks we're going to have a slowdown. Um, so collaborative robots, or uh, cobots, as they're often called, are these very small tabletop units. They're force limited, meaning they can't do too much damage if they whack you. And they have all kinds of safety uh, uh, mechanisms built in um, so that they, they really can't, um, or are not supposed to at least, hurt uh, hurt coworkers, um, and therefore they can operate out of cages and alongside uh, people on an assembly line, for example, or uh, um, uh, like an electronics uh, line, assembly line. Um, so these have helped drive the spread of industrial automation beyond those large factories, and, and Cobot companies, they haven't been a huge part of the industry, but they've kind of been the spear tip uh, for the sector, kind of moving into, into new areas. Harlow says demand for power and force limited robots though, these cobots has really peaked um, due to reduced functionality and capabilities. Um, you know, a lot of the safety mechanisms that allow the cobots to work alongside people also kind of prevent them from doing some more significant tasks um, because they, they're force limited. They can't lift up super heavy things. Um, and part of that shift will be driven by uh, kind of the increasing capabilities of traditional industrial robots, which have again, long been confined to cages but they're starting to come out of the cages um, due to new technologies like um, advanced vision systems that are coming online that are allowing them to operate much more safely alongside humans. So now you have these, these kind of large traditional industrial robots that also have the intelligence baked in uh, to not hurt people, which is a very good thing and increases their capabilities and increases the collaboration that can happen between humans and robots. So um, the thinking is that industrial robots are going to become more persuasive as a solution to many types of industries, while cobots maybe have um, kind of seen their day in the sun, and the sun is now setting. Yeah, interesting. And and you mentioned several reasons there, Greg. But any other outside factors, you know, that may be at play here in terms of the slowdown? Yeah, um, Harlow actually says uh, one of the big ones uh, is uh, the regulatory environment, um, and that could really slow down the pace of progress. So in the 2020s, he says, next year and beyond, uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning technology landscape is really gonna move from what it is now, which is kind of the wild west. It, there's not really much of a regulatory infrastructure in the US at least for a lot of robots, uh, like autonomous mobile robots, for example, or collaborative robots. There's really no one standards body that um, kind of has pervasive control and, and kind of dictates the standards. It, instead, there's kind of a reactive model, um, which is governed by OSHA. So if there's an incident, if something actually happens, OSHA can step in, but it's not really that kind of regulatory um, infrastructure that you, you need to, to kind of build a sector in a safe and reliable way. So um, Harlow thinks the introduction of mandatory legislation is inevitably gonna slow down the pace of progress. 
And it's gonna impact robotic automation because now you've got all of these firms that have been operating in kind of a loose, unregulated way. And the necessary regulation that's gonna come in is gonna just kind of reshape the industry, probably put a little bit of a, 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 a dampening effect on um, the pace of growth as well. So yeah, that's, uh, that's another factor. The robotics industry has been growing at a CAGR of 26%, which is like crazy fast. And I think it's, everybody is, is, has recognized that we're sort of due for a slowdown. And the stars are kind of aligning for that to happen in the near term and midterm. Yeah, no doubt. We've certainly uh, seen it before uh, in, in other with other technologies, Greg. Well, we certainly appreciate uh, your article here and looking forward to 2020 for robotics. And for much more, you can find that on ZDNet. Thanks for watching.